Chapter 2 Remember David thought back Six years ago To that fateful night Papa, came his daughter's small voice. Hmm? Mother David's groggy, sleepily concocted response. Papa, I... I had a nightmare. Could I sleep with you and Mother? Replied Small Alice. Of course, darling. What was the nightmare? There was a rabbit with a waistcoat and a man with a large hat and there was a cat with sharp teeth and they said bad things to me. What kind of things, sweetie? They said that, that if I told you, they would hurt you. What? Said her father, now more awake and slightly concerned by his daughter's words. David sat up and beckoned for Alice to give him a hug. His frail daughter embraced her father as small tears began to seep from the child's eyes. Don't worry, Alice. Nothing's going to hurt us. The next day, Alice seemed all too distant from her parents. All throughout the day, her father could have sworn that he heard Alice speaking to herself. It would have seemed normal, if not for the fact that it sounded like little Alice was talking to someone. As he passed his daughter's room, he overheard his daughter talking to someone named the Hatter. Come in, Papa, said his daughter happily. David stepped into his daughter's room and saw a small table with five cups of freshly brewed tea sitting on it. Four chairs were set up around the small table. How cute, thought David. She's having a tea party. Join us, Papa. David went towards the chair next to Alice, but before he could sit, his daughter's small hand quickly gripped him, and she said sternly, No, Papa. That's the Hatter's seat. Uh, the... the who? asked her father. The Hatter! He's my friend. He doesn't like when people sit in his seat. His daughter's tone had changed to one of utter seriousness. It almost concerned David, but he dismissed this. As he took his seat that his daughter had directed him to, a thought then crept into David's head. One that he was surprised had not come up earlier. Sweetie, who made this tea for you? Why, the Hatter did, said his daughter. Slightly annoyed, David tried again, this time paying no attention to his daughter's little fantasy. Uh, Alice, dear, did Mother give you the tea? No, silly papa giggled Alice, still beaming with glee. Mother has been in the garden all morning. I told you it was the Hatter, snickered his daughter. David, however, was in no way amused. He was no genius, but he was sure that scolding hot pots of tea 
did not just appear out of nowhere, and he knew that Alice could not reach the burners, much less use them. There was just something not right about the ordeal. David heard Alice whisper something, or at least he thought it was Alice. No, what am I thinking? Of course it's Alice. Who else could it be? He thought. You're silly, Hatter. Daddy's good. Right, Daddy? Chirped Alice, switching her gaze to his. What? Muttered David, still stuck on the matter of the mysterious tea. You're good, replied Alice. Uh, of course, darling, he said, still mulling over what was happening. David, feeling defeated on the matter, exited Alice's room, swearing that he could hear a voice behind him say, Hurry back. But figuring it to be his daughter, dismissing it and replying, uh, I will, Alice. Once again, that small giggle erupted from behind him as if his daughter knew something that he did not. Oh, Papa, you are funny. That was the Hatter. Not turning around, David returned to his study where a thought crept into his mind. Could she be telling the truth? Was it even remotely possible? No, no, of course not. It's simply her imagination, thought David. About two hours later, David looked out the study's large window that led out to the garden and nearly fell back in his chair at what he saw. There, in the dead center of the garden, right by the large oak tree, stood a white Rabbit in in a waistcoat. David rubs his eyes, <laughs> figuring that he must be tired and yawning to get out all of the sleep. And he must have seen something incorrectly. Only to find no rabbit but instead Dinah, Alice's black cat, standing on the top branch of the large oak. He smiled, having dismissed his previous delusion, only for Dinah to smile back at him. David could see each one of the cat's now razor-sharp teeth beaming up at him in a wicked grin with malice written across it. David rubbed his eyes, but no longer was he in his study upon opening them again. He could see nothing but a deep black which seemed to encompass everything. Somewhere in the distant, the sound of a ticking clock could be heard. David counted. One, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight times did the unseen bell toll, and with each tick of the clock, a sense of dread slowly settled over David's mind. Something wasn't right. Where was he? What could he do? And where was that clock? So many questions fluttered through his mind as he stood there, encased by the all-consuming void of light when he saw two eyes of amber emerge from it, followed by a smile full of those same inhuman razor-like fangs. 
the figure seemed to dance in thin air, switching from bobbing around and staying still before it stopped mere inches from David and started speaking. Its voice was cold, dark, and seemed to come from everywhere at once. followed by a sinister chuckle. The ticking got louder and louder before another figure appeared. Only David could barely see this figure. Whereas the dancing shadow that had spoken to him had glowing features, this new figure was only visible by the faint red glow of his eyes. From what David could make out, however, he saw that the figure was tall, enormously so, and lanky his features much like that of a rag doll. His face was unilluminated, but as David looked up, he could see a very large, dirty-looking top hat. But it wasn't normal. It was at least as tall as David's arm, and just as David's eyes met with the figures, a raspy voice erupted from the dark. This one, while sharing some similarities to the previous, was far more sinister, more scratchy, more high-pitched, more disturbing, in fact, and to David, it even sounded like the voice of a total and complete madman. A mad hatter. Tick-tock, tick-tock, tock and tick. The clock strikes once, Twice and thrice is the bell sound off and then Then, then you're late Late, 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 late Screamed the figure as the entire space around them began to tremble and shake David felt many hands grabbing at him, though he could see none as the feeling that he was falling through thin air began to consume him, and as he fell, he heard the sinister voice call down after him. Soon, soon, sooner than noon, then you will see, and then you'll be free. Free from the chains of humanity, into a land so fun and grand with People that are never sad. <laughs> because instead down here, we are all mad! Said the figure as it laughed and laughed, a sinister laugh. And it was then that David connected what his daughter had told him just last night when she was disrupting his slumber. She told of a hatter one who spoke awfully, and of a cat with razors for teeth. Things were making so much sense, and yet they at the same moment were perhaps more confusing as ever they had been. Late. Late. Late for what? David thought. Late. Late. Late! shouted his wife, who had only now decided to make her presence known. What? said David, still piecing the puzzle of where he had been together in his mind. When formed, it did nothing much to David's expectations. Such things were simply mad to think of. Mad, like the Hatter. He had been mad, but not angry, just... Off his head? 
whispered a small voice. Who's there? David said, turning his head only to meet his wife's gaze. Of course, he thought. She was the one who woke me up. Oh. Carried me up? Perhaps. Y yes, I indeed. I, I was falling, thought David. Oh, it's only me, dear. I was just saying that the new gardener was late again this morning. I swear he's off his head. A mess, a simpleton. Honest to God, I don't know why I hired the damn fool. Oh, well, first thing tomorrow, he'll be off. Off to ruin somebody else's schedule. My roses have a very tight and precise watering cycle. And thanks to that fool, his negligence might have cost me the most precious of all of my flowers in the garden. His wife was fuming over the late arrival of her hired hand over the previous two weeks, and it apparently cost the man his job this time. All it cost David was the annoying rant that his wife was now going on about. David could honestly care nothing for the flowers at the moment. At that moment, the only thing that mattered to David was figuring out what on earth had happened to him for the past 20 minutes of time. As he sat there, desperately attempting to form a reasonable explanation to put to the entire ordeal, he found that his memories of the strange episode had become fewer. He could no longer remember any of it, except for the tall figure with the hat. What did he mean by the call to end it all? And for that same matter, what on earth was he going on about? To David, as he would later put into his own words, they are the mad ramblings of a deranged lunatic. But we'll get to that eventually. <laughs>